it's very simple it just says that in a town there are n people labeled from 1 to n so i have n people labeled from 1 to n and there's a rumor that one of these people is the town judge so one people is a town judge now uh, how what we mean by town judge is that the town judge trusts nobody which means the town judge is a person who trusts nobody and everyone except the town judge trusts the town judge and he also says that uh, we have only one exactly one person who is a town judge which means who satisfy property one and two now the follow-up for you you can also pause or meanwhile think the the follow-up will be later on in the part is that if I don't give you condition number three, then what will change in the problem? Right? Cool. Now, uh, again, we are given an array called as trust array from AI to BI, which means, okay, AI trust BI. AI is a person who trust BI. And then I have to label or return the label of the town judge. If and only if the town judge exists, because I, I know that, okay, town judge may not exist. There is uh, no Superman in the town. So, as for sure here. So, basically, what we are saying is that, okay, I am saying AI trust BI. AI is trusting BI. I can just say now that okay, I have multiple people who trust each other. Okay, let's say if I have a person A trusting person B, a, a, a person let's say C also trusting person B. So I can kind of with a arrow represent okay, A is trusting B, B is trusting C, and so on and so forth as we try to build a graph. For the analogy, let's say we have a Superman. So you must have seen people trust someone. So, so they put their hand. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I trust. So you can see all the people are putting their hands and saying, okay, we are trusting Superman. So basically a person is trusting my Superman. Let's say SI, right? Or let's say S Superman. And my BI is also trusting my Superman. My, this person, like all of the persons, all these D I C I F I are trusting Superman, but you can see the Superman hands are just down because he don't trust anyone. He don't trust anyone that's true so we can directly uh, like directly link that to because my ai is trusting bi so i can just directly say like because i can have multiple people trusting each other so that can be very complex so to represent that complex structure we have a graph which means as you can see we have relationship a is trusting b why b is not not by why b is not trusting A. as we have seen that okay i like my girlfriend but as in like i like my crush but she she don't like me so that's a unidirectional graph so that is the reason okay i like my mom my mom likes me that's a bidirectional graph so it's a relationship and that the same relationship of trust i have to build as you know that you don't have trust with your uh -huh, okay uh, then we can see okay we have a relationship such that all the other people will actually trust superman but my superman will have no arrow to anyone else because he is not trusting anyone and also you can see superman has no arrow to anyone and i can just represent the same trust my town judge as a superman right cool now let's give you an example okay i have the trust from one to two okay one to two and again my condition of a town judge or a superman is that everyone else in the town should trust him so if i have n people one person is the superman itself remaining are n minus one people which means one person so for him he should have one incoming hand towards him which means my 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 superman should have one people all one people all one people what that means yeah all one people trusting my superman and you can see okay my node 2 is actually being trusted by node 1 and i i want all one node to trust me and okay what that all one node means you can see now Let's say we, have, we take this example. We can represent the exact system. Okay. One trust two. Sorry. One trust three. Two also trust three. Two also trust three. Now I can simply say, bro, you can see that the superman is the one who is trusted by all the people. All as in I have three people. One is the superman. Remaining are two. So two people, two people should actually trust my superman. So this person or any person in this node if it is trusted by three sorry, it is, if it is trusted by two people and he don't trust anyone as you can see he's trusted by two people and he don't trust anyone as you can see he don't trust anyone then my three is the superman my three is the superman and what about are one? Oh yeah okay, you can see one is not trusted by anyone but he needs to be trusted by two people to actually become a superman and he should also not trust anyone and he's trusting my three so he's, he's not a superman for example let's say if i take this example then you can easily see my three is trusted by two people that condition is satisfied but he's also trusting someone else which is not true superman cannot trust anyone
because he's always in a war mode now we can say that it represents the same thing with some other bigger graphs you guys you can see my three this is a my four is trusting my three my five is trusting my three my one is trusting my three my two is trusting my three but three is never trusting anyone so three is the superman let's say for this example my one my five is trusting my one my four is not trusting oh one person i need all the people to trust my superman so he's not a superman I don't have any superman in this. Okay, answer is minus one. What if, okay, uh, five trust four, okay, one trust four, two trust four, three trust four, four is a superman. No, bro, because four is trusting my two. As you can see this arrow, my superman cannot trust anyone. Okay, he's also not a superman. So no one, just superman in this. That is how we can simply build the graph. Oh, Aryan, are you saying to build a graph in this easy problem? Are you saying this? Bro, I am saying the analogy is a graph, but ultimately okay if i ask you after again always think and then code after you build the graph okay let's say you actually want to build the graph right now let's say you make the adjacency list you made the graph then what step what next step what, what you will do you will simply go and find in degree and out degree that's how you will represent right if someone is having how many incoming edges and how many outgoing edges how many incoming trust and how many outgoing trust and I want for my superman incoming trust should be n minus 1. Outgoing trust should be 0. Right? So you will try to actually use and build in degree and out degree. Right? Now I am saying you will convert your array. You will convert your this specific array to a graph. And then find the in degree and out degree. Which you might end up doing. Bro. I am saying why you even need this step. See. Now if I ask you from this array itself. Why can't you directly convert to the in degree and out degree? because one trust three so one has one of the out degrees one has one of the out degrees and three has one of the in degrees so okay in the out degree of one increase one increase this means plus plus and in the in degree of three increase plus plus in the same way out degree of two increase plus plus in degree of three increase plus plus out degree out degree of three increase plus plus in degree of 1 increase plus plus now ultimately have a check that in degree of my superman should be n minus 1 in degree of anyone any of the node i i, tra I try for all the nodes in degree of my superman if it is n minus 1 that is my superman but no bro he should ha also have a out degree of out degree of the superman should also be a zero if both the conditions satisfied then he is my superman so exact same stuff we will not convert that to a code i know you want to convert but please hold on hold on so you will what you will do okay you will have an in degree and an out degree at the exact same way rather than just converting to a graph we just skip that step because we only want in degree and out degree so i will just say uh, get the in degree and out degree for the incoming because it's a node from v0 to v1 i have a that edge so v0 actually i will increase the out degree v1 i will increase the in degree because in degree incoming is in v1 outgoing is from v0 then i will just out increase the out degree increase the in degree and then ultimately when entire thing is done i have to go and have a quick check that in degree of my superman should be a minus one and out degree of him should be zero if that is the case then this i is a superman and return that superman else if no one is my superman so please return a minus one now the exact same problem is this problem find the celebrity just take a screenshot of this and try to code it by yourself because it's a premium, premium problem it's a premium problem so it might not be available to you but this is the problem these are the examples let's say this is example one right this is the example two and the other constraints and have been asked by so many companies cool now now if i ask you bro what is the complexity of this as you can see it's o of n here and o of n here right o of n plus n is the time and space is also o of n for in degree and o of n for out degree okay space is o of n plus n can you improvise it although so far your time and space is o of n which is the most optimal but you can see it is a more o of n like one more o of n right so can you improvise that that is a question now uh maybe maybe not but for that you have to think of what is happening how again if i ask you to improvise then either you can improvise the time or you can improvise the space improvising the time which means you have two n loops like you have two n loops in one of the n loops you are gathering everything which means for every node gathering the entire in degree gathering the entire out degree and then when you have gathered everything then you are actually able then you will actually be able to process that who has n minus one as the in sorry out degree and zero as the in degree so for sure i have to firstly process that node entirely okay 
what is the entire integral? I can't in between say, okay, his integral has reached to n minus 1, so please return. Maybe it actually has some out degree in the future also. So, it is for sure that I cannot optimize my time. That is one constraint. Okay, can I optimize my space? Now, to optimize my space, I know one thing. Okay, I have n degree and out degree. Maybe I can reduce or remove one of them or maybe both of them. Who knows? Uh, both of them doesn't feel like because I have to keep track of the in degree and out degree. But maybe I can club these two. Maybe. Oh, for clubbing these two, then as we remembered, our answer was in degree and out degree. Now, if I club, which means either I have to add them up or subtract them, which means whatsoever value he is giving, which means in degree is giving and out degree is giving. If I if I am clubbing them, so I have to make a new vector which is degree and remove the in degree and out degree. So this degree variable, which sorry, a degree vector which I have made, it should be combination of in degree and out degree. Now combination as in either we can add in degree and out degree or we can subtract them. Now, if I look on very closely, my in degree is n minus one, and ultimately my only check which I need to do is in degree is n minus one and out degree is zero. So my clubbed variable, my clubbed degree vector, it should actually have a value which I can map back to these two variables, right? So I can one thing very easily say that in degree is n minus one, and in degree can never reach beyond n minus one because one thing, AI is never equal to BI. Right, so I cannot have a superman pointing to himself. It is not like that. He's not selfish. So it is not. It is never there that my AI is point like is pointing to himself as AI. Okay. So and I know I have n people, and one person is pointing to someone else. So max to max, a person can be pointed by maximum n minus one people. Max to max, max to max. So I know that maximum n degree a person, any person can reach is n minus one. Now, minimum out degree. A person can reach is zero. The superman had 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 both the hands down. Right, right. So out degree for him is zero. It is not that okay, out degree can be minus one. It cannot be there, right? So minimum out degree is zero. Maximum in degree is n minus one. If I do a subtraction, which means in degree minus out degree, and keep that in a variable called as degree. So I will keep okay. I know the minimum I can reach is zero for my out degree. Maximum I can reach is n minus one for my in degree. If I do a in degree minus out degree and I store that in degree minus out degree, then I can use that degree variable and I will say, okay, if degree is n minus 1, if degree of a node i is n minus 1, because I, I know I am storing in degree minus out degree and that can only be, my degree is equal to n minus 1 can only be possible if my in degree is n minus 1 and out degree is 0 because n minus 1 and out degree is 0 because to get this value, I cannot increase my in degree because I know maximum in degree can be n minus 1. I cannot decrease my out degree. I, 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 I cannot say, okay, n minus 2, minus of minus 1. So this is the maximum value possible. Thus, because of this value, because of this, because of this, that we cannot increase or decrease my in degree or out degree. I cannot increase my in degree beyond this and decrease my out degree beyond this. I can club them up and do a in degree minus out degree and then store that in my degree as a new vector and removing the in degree and out degree. So what I did was that I removed the in degree out degree. I kept only degree variable in that I am actually see as you can see earlier we had a out degree out degree. I am subtracting right. I am subtracting as you can see out degree in degree. It was your degree was in degree minus out degree out degree. I am subtracting in degree. I am adding. So I am subtracting my out degree. I am adding my in degree. And ultimately, I'll have a quick check that degree is equal to n minus 1. And remember, this will n minus 1 is only possible because we know this degree is in degree minus out degree. And this n minus 1 is only possible when your in degree is n minus 1 and out degree is 0. No other combination will give you n minus 1. Thus, it is very much okay for us to convert that to one variable. Now, ultimately, with that, I can like if that is my degree is n minus 1, I can simply return my i. Else, I can simply return my minus 1. And with this, your time is still low of n percent because you have to have to. Because again, you have to have to go on to all the pairs to ultimately know what is the total in degree and out degree for everyone and then have a check who has the appropriate in degree and out degree. So, time will still remain O of n plus n, while the space has reduced to O of n. 
and see this is very important in the actual real life world because because see in real life world you will deal with data let's say if you are doing if you're in any company let's say for, for example in my company i deal with data now when i am writing calculator as in i am writing a program which will actually have the incoming data i am using a spark right i'm using like let's say other technology also but yeah let's say if i'm using a spark so i'll write a data frame now that let's say a data set or, or a data frame that will accept the incoming data which is okay let's say 100 million rows and let's say 50 columns now if i have to do a row translator so that complexity will be o of n but that will take a space also of o of n in the memory because everything is memory based so for you it is very important to know that what program will take a space because if the space space exceeds it will try it will start writing everything to disk which is a slow process so for you space is also important time is for sure firstly important but space is also important because because if the space exceeds the memory cannot handle it so it will start writing again memory is very big but it will start writing if it exceeds the space it will start writing that to a disk and if you start writing, writing that to a disk it actually becomes a slow process because from your actual memory ram to actual disk it's a slow process of writing and like reading it back if we need that data again so that's the reason we actually look on for the space also cool thing you bye take care bye bye that's a real life use case in actual industry how it is used bye bye